Hello teachers, librarians, parents, and students. Today is chapter 15 of I Am Drums, so let's jump right into it. <clears throat> I'm finally able to complete Pete's homework the following day, after I'm done picking up gas from Wanda, mowing lawns all over town, and fighting the orb of death. A web search of amazing rock drummers gets more results than I imagined. And for every result that claims one thing, there's another claiming the opposite. There's no real answer as to who the best rock drummer might be. Just some names worth checking out. There are so many choices that I end up picking three. Neil Peart from Rush, Keith Moon from The Who, and Dave Grohl from Nirvana, and more recently, Foo Fighters. I check out music from each band at the library and listen to them at home. Keith Moon and Dave Grohl play really fast and powerfully, and I swear halfway through every song they're going to break their drums in half. I find one insane video where Keith Moon starts breaking his drums on purpose. It's absolute madness as he slams his bass drum into the ground and kicks his snare and toms across the stage. Neil Peart looks calm in comparison, but he still sounds like he's playing the entire kit at once. I'm convinced he has eight arms and the energy of a border collie herding sheep. A uh, quick little fact, Neil Payard actually just recently, within the past few months, passed away. So, rest in peace, uh, Neil. Neil Payard and Rush also have a few songs that fit into a genre Mr. Warner mentioned. Math rock. Some websites call it progressive, but the ideas are pretty similar. Take away the rules that rock music must have four beats per measure and a steady backbeat, and you get songs and time signatures of seven, nine, or even crazier stuff like 13. Unlike a lot of rock, there's almost no trace of blues, and it has a weird jazzy quality to it. I listened to songs by June of 44, Don Caballero, King Crimson, and a bunch of bands whose names I can't even pronounce. I swear I'm cross-eyed by the end. That's what Mr. Mourner must have meant. Some music requires mathematical thinking. All of them are good. Really good. But it leaves me with a question I have to ask Pete at our next Monday lesson. How do they only use their wrists when they play so loud? Pete pulls out his phone and loads a video. Check out Neil Payard playing a solo, he says, handing his phone to me. Yes, he moves his arms all over when he plays rock beats. And it's called showmanship. But when he plays the really fast stuff, he doesn't move his arms at all. I watch the video and see that Pete's right. Neil Payard flings his arms about, looking tough and cool, but when it comes to the fast stuff, it's all in the wrist. It's weird. I've always been angry when I play the drums. I even saw it as an advantage, but the more I learn about them, the less angry I feel. The next two lessons have a set pattern. The first five minutes, we talk about new music I've checked out at the library. John Coltrane, the saxophonist, Ella Fitzgerald, the singer, and more. For the first time since the conversation with my dad, I bring up John Bonham's solo and Moby Dick, and Pete doesn't say anything about how he died. He just smiles. Then we spend ten minutes playing singles and doubles and paradiddles and all other sorts of craziness. He makes me hold one drumstick a little higher than the other, and then I bring them both down in one swoop, creating the two quick strikes of a perfect flam. The rest of the lesson is a powerhouse of new drum beats and patterns each one cooler and harder to play than the last. Then, at the end of the second lesson, Pete says, I need you to do one other thing for me for next week. You need to dress in something nicer. I look down at my t-shirt and jeans. My hand goes to my hat, lifts it off my head, and holds it in front of me. What's wrong with what I'm wearing? Nothing, as far as I'm concerned. But you had to dress up for the middle school band performance, right? I nod. Wear whatever they forced you to wear for that, and let your parents know you might get home a little later than usual. I cringe at the thought of wearing those clothes and having to stay out later. My parents will freak if I'm not there when they get home from work. I can't just tell them I'll be missing for a few hours and expect them to understand. Why? Pete rubs his chin and exhales. I don't want to say too much. You'll just end up bummed if it doesn't work out. I arrive home with my head full of daydreams about what Pete has in store next week. I try to get my mind off it by going back online and searching something else. Something Pete didn't ask, but I'm thinking he'll like. 
I click in the browser search box, enter the phrase, amazing girl rock drummers, and click the search button. I wasn't expecting much, so I'm shocked when I get over 12 million results full of top 10 and top 20 and top even more lists full of girls who've done exactly what I want to do. Karen Carpenter from The Carpenters started out on drums and sang while keeping the rhythm for the band. I never knew the drummer could be the singer. Mo Tucker from Velvet Underground, who only used mallets, Danny Lennox would love her, and played while standing up. And there's more. Gina Schock, Meg White, Janet Weiss, Carla Azar. The list goes on and on and on. I'm not alone after all. And that's the end of chapter 15. Uh, the videos have been a little more spaced out late, uh, recently, just due to some time constraints I have right now, but I'm going to try really hard to get chapter 16 up tomorrow. Thank you so much, guys, and see you then.